Before I leave you with uh, chapter one for your, your unit test, I want to go over something that's not covered very clearly in, in functions, um, Nelson functions 11, and that is how to transform the graph of y equals 1 over x. Now, we did have a, a quick discussion of the graph of 1 over x in the section that I did on parent functions, but I want to go over that and do a few of the transformations to show you how, the, how it works for 1 over x. When you're working with the root of x or x squared, it's really easy to pick a few points and to use a mapping rule and find the new graph. But with the graph of 1 over x, you had those weird things called asymptotes, if you recall. So let's go back and graph 1 over x and then do some transformations on it. So the two key, key points to this function, the key points of the graph of 1 over x are 1, 1, and minus 1, minus 1. So that means when I put 1 in for x here, 1 over 1 is 1. So that means 1, 1 right here is a key point on this graph. And if I put in negative 1, 1 over negative 1 is negative 1. Now, remember I told you these are the key points, and that what happens to the function as we get bigger this way as x gets larger if you put 1 over a really large number it's going to approach this axis but never cross it. Same thing as we go to the left here if I put in minus 3 I would have minus a third, minus a quarter, minus a fifth and so on. So the function as we go to the right is going to approach the x-axis from above on this side and it's going to approach the x-axis from below on this side. It does not cross this axis. And that axis, we called it an asymptote. So you represent it with a dotted line, like this. Kind of hard to see that, isn't it? So we use a dotted line for the asymptote, and we're going to check out... Let me see if I can do it red. It might show up a little better. There we go. So... What's the equation of this asymptote? This one. What's the equation of the x-axis? If I gave you, asked you for a line, what, what is this equation? Well, it's something equals zero. And the question is, is it x equals zero or y equals zero? So what you want to do, and sometimes I get confused with this myself, you have to think, okay, each of these points, 0, 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3, 0, all the y's are zero. So that means that y is equal to 0, is the x-axis. Now, conversely, if I want to do the what happens to the graph as we go the other way, so we had, we had this function coming up. So as we go into the half, 1 divided by half is 2. So that puts me here. 1 divided by third is 3. And you can see the function is going to go up this way. Again, you can go back to parent functions lesson to figure out how this all happens. Okay, and what is the equation of that line? Well, this time we have another asymptote. The asymptote is going on the vertical axis, and it is, let's see if we can put it in pink, it's pretty bright. What is the equation of this line now? So again, if you're not sure, well, you know this one's y equals zero, so this has to be x equals zero. And the reason it is x equals zero is because every point on this line has x equals zero as a coordinate. Zero, zero, zero and one, zero and two, zero and three. So the function y, equal, y equals one over x has two asymptotes, y equals zero and x equals zero. The key points right here, very important, that you have 1, 1, and minus 1, minus 1. And if you can transform those two points and figure out what happens to the asymptotes, you're off to the races. Okay, so let's take a look at, uh, let's see, it's page 80 in your textbook, page 80. And they ask you to do some transformations on the graph of y equals 1 over x, and that would be 5c, question 5c. So they do several different graphs. Sketch y equals 1 over x. Okay, we've done that. What's y equals 2 over x? y equals 2 over x. So, hmm, 
2. So this is the same thing as 2 times 1 over x, isn't it? So we vertically stretch by a factor of 2. So we could write it like this. So that means this is going to be 2 times higher. All my y coordinates are going to be double. So the mapping rule for y equals 2 over x would be x and y go to, I don't do anything to the x's, I keep them the same, but I have doubled the y. See, so this is like your a value here, a times f at x, where f at x is 1 over x. Okay, so you don't have to worry, it's just two y's. So instead of the point 1, 1, I'm now going to have the point 1, 2. 1, 2, so 1 and 2. So my function is going to start up here. And the asymptote, the question is, does the asymptote move? Well, the asymptote doesn't move because the asymptote would move if there was a vertical shift or a horizontal shift. So these asymptotes aren't going to move. And this is just going to approach this way and it's going to come out this way. So all I've done is shifted the graph up, stretched it by a factor of two. There's no shifting, sorry, there's no shifting. It's just a vertical stretch by a factor of two. So same thing with this point here. Instead of it being minus one, minus one, it's going to be minus one and minus two. The asymptotes do not move. Okay, so what happens when we have a shifting of the horizontal or vertical axis, that's going to happen if I have an equation such as this. And I'm going to skip right down to, um, sorry, it's not 5c, it's 5b, isn't it? No, no, 5c, I'm right, 5c. So I have this one, y equals minus 2 over x minus 1 plus 3. Okay, so that's about as difficult as it can get. You want to take a look again to see what changes are affecting the x's, what changes affect the y's. So anything that is with the x, like down here, we started with 1 over x, right? We had 1 over x. So if we had 1 over x, now we have 1 over x minus 1. This is a change to x. Change to x. And everything else is a change to y because it's not within, it's not with the x. Remember, it would if it affected x, it would have to be down here. So these are all changes to y. Changes to y. So if I were to make a mapping rule for this transformation, so I start with the graph of 1 over x, and so if I was to write this in function notation, I would have started it like this. y equals minus 2 times the function at x minus 1 plus 3. So you see this went in for the x down here, and these numbers were out front. We could write minus 2 times 1 over x minus 1, right? That's the same thing. So this would be function notation for this transformation. And I would say, oh, this happens where y is equal to 1 over x to give me this equation. I hope this isn't too confusing. There's no really easier way to explain it. So you can see that I have shifted. x minus 1 means a shift which way? x's are weird. Which way did it go? To the right, 1. I'm hoping you said that. So my coordinate x, y is going to go to x plus 1. So I've added 1. I'm moving it to the right one. And these are my changes to y. So I just have to write minus 2, y plus 3. Now because I have shifted it to the right one, that means that the asymptotes are also going to shift with it. So if I move this one to the right one, it would now be over here. So these values here, let me circle them again, this plus one and this plus three 
are telling me that the asymptotes have moved. So the asymptote x equals 0, if I add 1 to that, so I'm going to write asymptote x equals 0 is now x equals 1. The asymptote, and we have the other asymptote there. Let's pick up my pen that I dropped. The other asymptote, y equals 0, is now going to be x, uh, sorry, y equals 3. So I've moved my asymptotes. So let's move over here and I'm going to draw it for you. So let's start with just, you can compare it to the graph of y, y equals 1 over x. So I'm going to put this on my grid. And I have new asymptotes. So the asymptote x equals 0 is now x equals 1. x equals 1. And the other asymptote is y equals 3. 1, 2, 3. So I'm up here. So this is y equals 3 and x equals 1. Now we have a mapping rule. And we're going to use those two key points to see what happened to them. So 1, 1 and minus 1, minus 1. Okay, we're going to use those two points here and apply this mapping rule down here. So let me just bring this up here. So 1, 1 is going to become 1 plus 1 minus 2 times 1 plus 3. Oops, almost ran out of paper there. So that means it's going to be... Oh, I forgot to put in the 1 here. 1 plus 1. Okay, so our mapping rule was x plus 1 over here. x plus 1. So 1 plus 1 is 2. And minus 2 times 1 is minus 2. Minus 2 plus 3 is 1. So 2, 1... That's going to be one of my coordinates. Now let's do the negative one, negative one coordinate. So the key points, remember these are the key points here. Very important points on the graph of y equals one over x. So minus one is going to go to minus one plus one. And the other one, I have minus two times minus one plus three. So that means minus 1 and 1 is 0, and minus 2 times minus 1 is positive 2, plus 3 is 5. So my other coordinate here is going to be 0 and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I'm way up here. Now, because I have the asymptotes drawn in, I'm going to extend this one here because we're kind of, we're kind of off the page a bit. My graph is now bordered by this asymptote, so this is going to come up, and this is going to come down on this side. Hoping you can see that. And the other one is going to approach this axis and approach this axis. And there's your graph of y equals this whole big long equation here. Minus 2 over x minus 1. So again, that's 5, 5c. And this is part three of it. And that's on page 80. Okay, I'll give the link to the textbook again. So that's all you have to do for the graph of 1 over x. It's important that you find the asymptotes by looking at the translations. If the x's go to the right, so here we had, here was the original asymptote. The vertical asymptote was y equals x equals 0, this one, and we shifted it to the right one from this equation here. We had to change to the right one, so my asymptote went to the right one. We also had the plus 3 here, down here. Plus 3 means the other axis went up 3, that's my y-axis, and I shifted it up here. So once you sketch on your, your asymptotes, 
and do two key points. That's all you need. So we had the two key points here, and then we can just sketch the graph because it's bounded by these vertical and horizontal asymptotes. So I hope that helps you. 1 over x is a tricky one. And let me know if you're having any problems that you want me to, to help you with, okay? Like my page, subscribe. Bye.